Oh, hello, and welcome back to the sexy, sexy Stokelona career mode. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. There was an amazing response on the very first episode. I didn't know there were so many Stilk fans out there. We're, we're reaching almost 2,000 views and over 100 likes. You guys absolutely smashed it on that opening uh, career mode episode. And you guys really seem to like the concept of we're going to try to bring in players that don't get enough run on the bigger team. So, you know, we're going to be checking out the arsenals. A lot of you guys gave me amazing suggestions in the comments section. A lot of fans from different teams are saying, hey, this guy doesn't get enough or this guy doesn't get enough. Specifically, you know, Joel Campbell on Arsenal and right here, Bruno Zaculli, Zaculini, Zaculini. I'm going to call him Bruno Z uh Zucchini. <laughs> anyway, I'm a Manchester United fan myself, so I already know. I want to take a look at Andres Pereira. I want to take a look at James Wilson. I think, you know, you know, maybe the Adnan Yanz is, you know, he's on, he's on loan at, at Dortmund, but maybe next season take a look at him. A, uh, an Atletico Madrid fan told me to take a look at Jose Jimenez as well as Angel Correa because they don't get enough play. So I'm thanking all you guys, and a lot of you guys yelled at me. I'm hearing you, I'm hearing you, I'm doing the training, all right? Chill. Yeah, chill. This is essential. You're killing the mood. You're killing the sensuality of this career mode right now. And there we go. Um, the reason why I didn't do training in the first one is I wanted to bring in some good young talents and go ahead and put them into, uh, bring them in first before we start training. So the likes of Grimaldo, the likes of Sergio Samper. A lot of these Barcelona guys are nice, young, you know, low overall ratings. And this is pretty much my first time using it. I'm not going to be playing these individually one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe in the future, if some more news comes out about it, this is the best way to do it. But uh, from what I've seen and from what I've tested, it's right now the best way. It's really good to grow your players. It's actually incredible. And it's one of the best additions ever in a FIFA, uh, straight up. Because the thing in previous ones, one thing that you can never really influence is stamina growth. And I think that's the biggest thing in this one is I'm taking players and I'm already seeing when I put them into the system and I go ahead and train them in stamina, you can bump up that crappy stamina pretty quick. Like, in one or two sessions, you can get them up, especially right here. And for all you guys, for all you Stoke fans, I'm hearing you, Oliver Shenton, you're saying that he's a Stoke boy, you gotta keep him there, he's got great potential, he's kind of a hometown hero. So he's going nowhere, boys. Shenton, or Senton, tell me how to pronounce his name. I myself, admittedly, not, not, I don't have a lot of history with Stoke. So if you guys want to fill me in, I'm glad I'm more than willing to, uh, I'm more than willing to listen and, uh, Basically, I, ho I hope I do you guys justice, but there you guys go. I'm going to be sending them I'm going to be putting them on hard because there doesn't really seem to be any you know kind of big fluctuation in them But here we go another good signing for us from Barcelona B from my time managing at Barcelona B We get Jean Dongu Tafak or as I like to call him Snoop Dongy Dong and another contract well not contract accepted, but uh, Basically a, a place a deal is in place now. We have to come to terms with Kalechi and Nacho, and Nacho, I believe is how you would say is these names are difficult. All right, I can do this one. Rudin Loftus Cheek, <laughs> nailed it, nailed it. And another guy we're gonna be trying to snipe in away. Rudin Loftus Cheek, as well as Dominic Solank from Chelsea, as well as Bertrand Traore, and we're gonna be going after James Wilson right here. And a lot of these guys are really, really cheap. I mean, this is really surprising. There are a lot of expensive players in FIFA, but I don't remember like these young talents being this cheap. In the previous FIFAs, I remember like in FIFA 15, because they have high overalls, I mean high potentials, they tend to be a little bit more pricier, but this year you can snipe some really good young talent off of the bigger teams, guys. So I'm really excited about this career mode. I'm really excited to go ahead and try to bring in a lot of these players. Like Munir right here is only 3 mil. Only freaking 3 mil. We're going to go ahead put an old man Odom Wingy out there. And we're going to go in for Dominic Solank right here. He's, uh, here's the other thing is he's technically on loan. Fatis right now, but uh, since FIFA, I don't know why a next-gen game doesn't have enough space, but they just don't have enough space to account for all the loans that Chelsea have. So a lot of their players that are loaned out on other teams are, within FIFA anyway, permanently transferred onto that team. So that's why we can actually get um, Dominic Solank in this first window. And of course, we're going to go in for Sancho, another Barcelona, Barcelona B product right here. He can play the left wing, he can play striker, he can play all, all over the place. And, you know, we're basically, we're not calling Stoke alone or for nothing. If you guys have any more suggestions, I've been loving all the suggestions that you have, so keep them coming down. And if you're liking, if you're liking our 
uh, transfers are here with the Dongu Tafak man right here. As you see, you can play striker, right wing, left wing, and center forward. Has the acrobat trait. Nice little pace. And a, a patch just dropped, guys. A patch just dropped, and the gameplay feels a little bit better. And there we go. We get our backup striker. I know the Dongu man's pretty good, but Kalechi is going to be uh, basically the main man that we'll be developing right alongside, right in back of... Uh, Mama Diouf. I do want to use Diouf because I think he's the type of striker that you want to use in, in FIFA 16. Some guy who's got decent pace, but more has really good strength, and that's what I want to try out. On just prayer, we can go ahead and bring him in and play him behind Bullion. And yes, guys, a lot of you guys have been telling me to play basically a 4 3 1 formation, and I will be going ahead and switching out my formation, but that's a little bit later in the crew mode, because I'm doing transfers, 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 the oh, there we go, boys, and as you can see, yeah, all these guys, really, really cheap, James Wilson, for only a mil, and now we're going to go into the European Cup right here, Stoke City versus Chievo Verona, and as you can see right there, I'm playing 4-2-3-1 with Boyan, sitting right behind Mama Youth. we got, I believe, Afale, Afalai out on the left with Shakiri out on the right, and then we have Charlie Adam and Wayland uh, just sitting deep, playing those balls out wide. And now we're gonna go into this match right here. We, uh, if you remember from our previous match, we uh, basically won those two, and we're doing pretty well in the preseason world. Not preseason World Cup, but it's preseason European Cup as we win ourselves a pen in the fifth minute. Some things change, but apparently after the patch, it's still ridiculously easy. The computer just gives pens away like nothing, and you also give away pens pretty quickly, but I ain't gonna complain. That was a pen, I guess, and I'm gonna go ahead. Goals are still hard to come by, even post-patch, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it where I can. Doing the Spanish Archer. Posed right there is Mamadouf, scoring, I believe, his second goal of this young preseason. And look at that right here. You know, the goalie has 96? That's an odd choice for a goalie. Come on, man, even try. The goalie didn't even try it there. But a uh, bad pass for me. Chievo Verona is in, fars it, and gets side netting right there. But a little bit of uh, showing, showing a little bit of danger right there. But then we are on the attack. Boyan kind of floats it and forcing a save from the keeper right there. We we'll go ahead and earn, earn ourselves a corner, and now we're back on the attack. Boyan, what does he do? He feeds Diouf, and that's another thing right there. If you see that, like you can kind of fall away and hit uh, hit shots this year, and it actually will get on target. So, you might be seeing some ridiculous goals this year. Who knows? Who knows? Hopefully, the patch mate's a little bit better. But an amazing save from Jack Butland. But we do give up a corner, and right here, it's tapped inside. It's played in, but it's cleared off of the line, and it would not matter. A dangerous moment, but. But Chievo Verona was offside in that situation, and we would go ahead and take our lead into the half 1-0. But in the second half, it would be Chievo Verona turns us, frees it, and a ridiculous shot. They tore us apart, but that that ball, that final product, that final touch was not very good. But that was a lot better right there, forcing Butlin into another save. Goalies seem a lot better this year, both you know shooting against and shooting um, defending for you. Anyway. Um, but now we got Diouf onto the ball. Cuts inside. Terrible angle by the defender right there. Goes for the finish shot. But uh, tracking back right there. The other Chievo Verona uh, player was able to go ahead and deflect it. Almost getting ourselves a second. And now we're going to bring in some of the new boys. Sergi Samper, Dongo Tasfak into the game right here. Van Ginkle also into the game. Little finesse shot from distance. But unfortunately, does not was not able to put on target. But look nice, look nice, and and Hinacho in. But what a terrible pass! We gotta put his his short passing or long passing definitely uh, through through do some training drills with him. But now we're gonna go ahead, cutting inside with Duncan Tafa, the fresh legs, the pace, and the finish. And there we go, just a kind of a lollipop, just rainbow did into the goal over the keeper. But there you guys go. That's what I'm talking about. You got a shooting across the goalie. Uh, this year, shooting across goal is definitely more OP than than uh, uh, than near post OP was last year. And also, like body like body paints are back. But also, all you really need to do, I'm used to like cutting in from the wing by doing a fake shot. The CPU always takes the ball, almost always takes the ball at you when you do that like fake shot. But if you just like kind of do like RT LT and then just kind of like stop, cut in, and then hit the sprint button again. You can actually do in a couple defenders. That's what I've been figuring out. Still figuring out the game. We have early access. Maybe there'll be another patch. But uh, for now, I'm starting to enjoy the game a little bit more. I'm starting to, to get into it. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully, I'm a little bit more hopeful. 
about where I was then uh, you know a couple days ago but as you can see we're more we're back right into the transfers lads and we we're trying to snipe away some amazing talent from both Barcelona and Chelsea right here and we are getting a lot of contract well not contract offers accepted but we're getting a lot of uh, basically uh, deals accepted and now we just have to come to personal terms to sign the likes so if you guys want it who do you think? Who are other big names? This is the one big signing that I'm going for this year, and that is Jesse Rodriguez. We still haven't been able to hear back from him, and I'm going to be training, guys. I am going to be training, most definitely. And as you can see right here, C's and B's, it's not bad. It's not bad, uh, basically. But as long as we put them on hard, they're going to be getting good, solid experience throughout the whole entire year, and that's what matters. And as you can see right there, Senton, his stamina has already gone up from... Um, 53 to 54 after two sessions, which is just incredible. Like the, the amount of growth that you can get out of these youngsters is is well done, EA. A credit where credit is due. Well done on the training system. Loving it, loving it so far. As we try to bring in Biden out right here. And we're into the semi-final for the European International Cup up against Hull City. More of a test, a former uh, BPL side. So let's go ahead and see what we can do up against the likes of the Tigres. As you can see, Steven Ireland into the game. Not all of our top people went into this because there wasn't a lot of time to rest in between these matches. Only three days rest in between all these matches, so not exactly the first team in there. And it showed as Hull City was kind of tearing us up. And especially right here, out of nothing, just drops it on a dime, cuts our defense in half, splits us right down the booty hole, and tears us a new one. Oh, the ginger, the ginger ninja just sneaking in behind us. And Hull City gets up one, up against South. I was, I was playing a little bit more confident. I was feeling good, but what the heck happened to our defense? And Jack Butland, uh, it's not really his fault. Right after I said near post OP wasn't good anymore, but now we're on to attack. Snoop Doggy Dong passes it over to Grimaldo. The ex-Barcelona men linking up, and it falls to Steven Ireland. There we go. The Irish Messi right there going ahead and scoring for a new Stoke Alona. And great, great play there. Great. I mean, uh, it's not exactly how we drew it up, but dangerous over the top ball. We get the, we go ahead and get the flick on right there. A generous bounce toward us and Steven Ireland, Johnny on the spot, predatory like a dolphin. Look it up, the predators. And now we're gonna go ahead see if we can do any more. And oh my God, look at Ireland is busting through, but a great save, a great great monster save right there by the Hull City uh, keeper as that will go ahead and take us into halftime, all tied up at one a piece. And, um, but now in the second half, a dangerous ball played in. Hull City is in. Diame hitting it right at Jack Butlin, and he would go ahead and save that. And now we are in. Look at this. We're on the counterattack. Boyan spots his man, the new man from Manchester City. And Nacho, and Nacho, and Nacho hits it right at the keeper. Damn it. Oh, no nachos for us tonight. No nachos for us. As we're going to go ahead and settle this and see who moves on with a pen, no T, shoot out. Charlie Adam steps up top right. That's how we do, boys. That's how we do. Now, Abel Hernandez starting off the bunch. I'm going to be doing the wiggles. I'm going to be doing the drops. And Abel Hernandez pings it off the post. No good. No good. We are safe. Now, can the bean, can the beanstalk get it? Yes, the beanstalk can. He is the man. And now we're up. Maloney. The Hull City man. Can Jack Butlin be here on scrambling all over the place? And I save it right there. Going ahead. A very fortunate save. And man, doesn't their keeper look super short? What is up? How short is their keeper? Guys, uh, penalties feel exactly the same this year, I must say. You go top right into that sweet spot, it's almost impossible for them to save. But now Luco steps up. He does the stutter, and the stutter does me in as he goes right down the middle. The mind games are real, but we still have a two, a two goal lead right here. Boyan steps up. Can he be the hero? He is the ex Barcelona man right here. And this is new guys. You can see that the camera is shaking as I run to celebrate with my booties, my booties, my buddies, and I'm doing the sturridge dance. And even the keeper runs up. That was pretty fun. That was pretty fun. I'm not gonna lie. But there we go. We get uh, um. Deal accepted for Jesse Rodriguez. Can we be bringing in what a deadly trio we would have right up there if we had freaking uh, a f just just imagine that three going up front, Mama Diouf, and then Shakiri on one side, and then Jesse Rodriguez on the other side. Whoo, whoo, that would be some dirty, filthy, sensual, sexy, sexy Stoke Alona type stuff. As we go ahead and do bring in Ruben Loftus, um, Ruben Loftus Cheek. 
he he's not the highest rated guy but he does have very high potential and we'll see if we can actually raise these players up pretty quickly with the training system and now we're gonna go for a little bit bigger fish you know Sergio Roberto maybe to pair in that midfield maybe go after Alan Halilovic after his loan but that would be pretty nice we could probably get the future you know CMs and CDMs of Barcelona right there and uh, we're gonna also go in for Bruno Zucchini Zucchellini right here as I like to call him Bruno um, I don't know what I like to call him, <laughs> apparently. But Zuccolini right here. Uh, Manchester City fan said he's really talented and they don't use him enough. And that is pretty much the perfect profile. The perfect profile of a player that I want to bring in. I want to bring in those players, give them a shot, and have them really shine. Like I'm going to be doing right here with Sandra. We're going to close out this episode with two massive signings. We bring in two great talents. Sandro, the ex-Barcelona man, and Ruben Loftus-Cheek. As you can see, their stats are here. Not incredible. One's rated 72 and the other one's rated 63. But for now, they're not all that great. But in a couple of years down the road, we can really challenge. We can really do some things in the BPL. We can really challenge maybe the likes of Europe. We can really become, I don't know, the Barcelona? Or at least Barcelona light of the EPL. And that is going to be pretty much my goal for this career mode as we're just making transfers non-stop a lot of great transfers in this episode and there are gonna be a lot more great transfers in the next episode if you did enjoy go ahead and smash that like button my name's b minus hopefully you guys are having an incredible day remember stay yourself stay humble and be weird